All right, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to look at gradients right now, and I want to look at the energy density gradient of a magnetic dipole field. I think that would be a lot of fun. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down the um, energy density of a magnetic dipole field for a particular configuration that I thought was particularly simple. Um, you know, considering that it is a dipole field and all those other sorts of things. So it's got something going on like this, 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared. In the numerator and in the denominator it's x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fourth. Now you might remember that a, that a dipole, uh, its um, magnetic field drops off as 1 over the um, cube of the uh, of the um, field uh, of the distance, right? And this basically says the same thing, right? You have something here coming down as 1 over 8, right? And then we have two factors up here. So the square root of this, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, that's the distance. So uh, the um, fourth this to the fourth means it's the eighth, right? So the distance to the eighth, and then we have something that's kind of like the distance squared. So we've got the whole thing is one over the sixth, and the energy density is proportional to the square of the field, so we're okay. So uh, just to remind you, a dipole is something like this, so that it, um, so if we have a point dipole here, right, it's going to have a, um, positive and a negative edge. We represent it by this um, arrow, but you know this is all at this point here. And then we have uh, field lines coming out like this and like I said dropping off as the cube of the um, of the distance. Alright, so something like that coming around here, up and around, up and around, up and around, there we go. So it looks sort of like that. This is its energy density. And so what we want to do, again, oh, it's the energy density if this is the z direction, right? If z is going up there. Um, and then we have this, and we want to find its gradient. All right. And the gradient we write del u, right? And del is just this operator. In the x-direction you take the x-derivative, in the y-direction you take the y-derivative, and in the z-direction you take the z-derivative, right? Times u. And then when you do this, what you do is just foil this in. You foil the u into the um, vector. So we have x, in the x-direction we have du dx, in the y-direction we have du dy, and in the z direction we have du dz. So it's just basically the slope of the function with respect to that particular parameter in each of the um, vector components, right? So that's that's all it is. It's quite simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up, right? So I'm going to find the partial derivatives. You see I have these three partial derivatives, so I'll break break it up by finding the partial derivatives first and then putting them into the um, into the gradient. So you don't have to just write everything in one line going all the way down the page, right? You know, sometimes that's useful, but, you, but usually if you have things where you can break a problem up, you break the problem up, do each pro part of the problem separately, then if there are errors it's a lot easier to find them, and you don't have this huge thing where you're switching from this part to that part to that part and back, this part to that part to that part and back, and so forth and so on as you go line by line by line. You just stick with one bit all the way through. That's going to let you do something else that I'll show you a little bit later on, um, which is going to be really useful and can save you some time as well. Um, so when I take this derivative I just throw everything in here, right? You know, I've got my constant and I've got all my other stuff here 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fourth. All right. And then while I'm busy taking my derivative, the first thing I do is I pull out my constant, right? And we've all been taking derivatives for a long time now, so it's not 
anything special or scary. Um, and then I'm going to take take the derivative of the numerator, keep the denominator, then take the um, derivative of the denominator, keep the numerator. Basically, I'm going to use the chain rule. There's a, or not the chain rule, excuse me, the um, product rule. Uh, you know, I know that in math classes they have some extra special something called a, uh, what, what do they call it, the um, quotient rule. Uh, the quotient rule is just the product rule um, for, for people who don't get the product rule. So, um, so first I do this top part, the derivative of um, 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared with respect to x is just minus 2x. Simple enough. And I leave the um, denominator alone. Then I add in whatever I, the denominator is, right? So first I, uh, when I do the denominator, that's going to be um, minus 4, right? times um, the, the derivative of this, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared now to the minus 5, right? And then I've got the derivative of x squared plus y squared plus z squared 2 uh, um, with respect to x, excuse me. So that's 2x. And then I've got what in the numerator I wasn't playing with before, z squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, so simple enough, right? Um, now when you do this, you look at it, you say, well, for one thing, what can I do, right? Well, I mean, for one thing, you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, well, I can pull out the 2x, for example. So now, now I've got minus 2x here, I've got a minus 4 here, so yeah, I can pull out a minus 2x, so I've got minus 2 mu naught m over 4 pi squared, right, times x, and, oh, and this is an m squared, and I'll put the x up here so I don't think it's a multiplication sign. Um, then what I can do is I can multiply this guy by x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fifth, or x squared plus y squared plus z squared, so over x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this is x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fifth on both sides, right? And then I can actually add and subtract um, these two things, right? So now I'm going to have x squared plus y squared plus z squared um, plus four times this bit and four times that bit and four times that bit. Um, so uh, x, we have just an x squared minus four x squared, so that's minus um, three x squared, and everything is the same for y, right? And then for z, uh, we have eight z squared plus z squared, so that's 9z squared. So if I really want to do, so if I really want to do this well, I can uh, pull this um, 3 out. So I have minus 6 mu naught m squared over 4 pi squared. I'm, I'm finishing this up, so I'm going to keep the x up here. So I have a 3z squared minus x squared minus y squared now times x all over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fifth. Now let's see, what did I say here? I said that this was like 1 over 6. Let's see if this is like 1 over 7. If so, I'm okay. So this is like minus 10 plus 1, 2, 3 is 1 over 7. So this is all right. So I'm good with that, okay? And the nice thing is, is, you know, this is completely symmetric with interchange of x and y, right? If I change all my x's to y's, I'd have exactly the same, and all y's x's, I'd have exactly the same function. So, except for this x, everything is going to be the same if I take the y derivative. So we have 6 mu naught m squared over 4 pi squared. Um, times 3z squared minus x squared minus y squared times y, 
over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fifth. Okay, so that's the second one. Uh, the third one, that's a little bit different because I've got the z, right? So the z guy, he's going to have a slightly different um, derivative, right? So if we have du dz instead, um, this mu naught bit, mu naught m squared over 4 pi squared, that doesn't change. Um, the derivative of the numerator changes, right? So instead of being minus 2x, it's going to be plus 4z, x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fourth, 4z, all right? And then here, we're going to have all this the same except for this is going to be a z, so we're going to have um, minus 4, 2z, 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared all over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fifth. Mm, and that spread out a little bit, but that's okay. I'll, I'll live with that. Uh, move my chair so I'm not so cramped. All right, so how do we do this? Well, now we can pull out a 4z, so we have 4 mu naught m squared z over 4 pi squared. Um, and here we had x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the um, four fifth now. So now we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus um, four, four z squared plus two x squared plus two y squared. So um, that means we have three x squared plus three y squared plus or minus we have minus 4z squared, we have plus z squared, so minus 3z squared here. Um, I can only hope. And then, you know, I can pull out that 3. So I have 12 mu naught m squared over 4, four pi squared. Um, x squared plus y squared minus z squared over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fifth, right? And that is uh, what I need to do with these, uh, with these derivatives. Now I can just combine everything and get a reasonably good situation. So my new setup is not as, uh, nice as my old one in some respects. Some other respects it's better. But. Okay, so here, now we can um, combine, right? So we have del u is equal to something, right? Uh, so we'll look at these guys here, and um, so I have six, minus six mu naught m over 4 pi squared. So 6 mu naught m squared over 4 pi squared is common. Oop, forgot my z. Oop, sorry. All right, and unfortunately the um, numerator is not, doesn't have anything in common. Let me, I would really prefer it did, so I'm going to check one more time. Right. I, I, don't know that it should, but I would prefer. So I don't think so anyway. So I've got x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 4z squared is 3z squared. Yeah, I'm, that's what we get. We get what we get. We're okay with it. All right. So I can also pull out that x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the fifth. Um, and I don't think I can pull out anything more. This makes me a little sad, but not too sad. 
All right, so let's see. In the x direction, then I have minus. All right. Okay, so it's in the minus x direction. May as well keep that going. And then I have um, pulled out this all of that stuff. So I have 3z squared minus x squared minus y squared x. And then I add in in the y direction, which is still negative minus y hat 3z squared minus x squared minus y squared y and I'm I'm not feeling it. I'm going to go down to the next line. Plus uh, I've got a 2 here 2 um, z hat x squared plus y squared minus z squared z. Okay? And so that is the gradient there. Um, and, that, and that's how you do a gradient and how you keep track of all those fun things. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, or maybe even more. So um, why don't you have some fun and come back and watch the next one soon. Bye now.